Fortian, Digital Shaman, Lord, the Lord of Ord. Anyways, this is uh, some observations from uh, my backyard uh, from yesterday, uh, October 17th, starting around um, 8.06 p.m. Eastern Time. And uh, we're just looking at these, um, what we call orbs. Some people call them uh, beans of light, um, whatever they are, and their behavior. And uh, the reason why I'm going to continue to, f to film my backyard is it's easy. I think all of us should do the same thing in our regional, our local area, our backyards, or our location to see um, different uh, with changes, right? Um, behavior, observable changes in possible behavior. Anyways, so these round dots are showing up. It is a cloudy day, but it's not raining. Uh, it was partial cloudy all day. Um, so these are not stars, and they're not water droplets. And they're faint. So we can see these round balls showing up. And let's see what the next one goes like this. And I start to see something bright right here. There's a round ball. It's very dim. Not much energy or being emitted. Um, some more round balls. And this is filmed about every uh, with every ten seconds or so. Uh, one ball starts to get bright right here. So you can see these. It's very faint, isn't it? it wasn't a very spectacular light. Ah, there's the two. There's two faint ones right here. I have one bright one. The next one, the two have shifted over here. Two bright ones, just like, almost like a, the coupling up. Um, it could be an illusion like every other goddamn fucking thing in this place. But you know what? What is going on here? Are these like... Uh, Mimicking eyes. Um, next thing, the, uh, the, the they're not bright. There's a dim one here, and this right there. So there's two right here. There's like three, two. That's not emitted from any back light in the backyard. Next. And there's one, two, faint right there. There's a faint one right there. Not much going on here. Seem to move on. There's a faint one in the distance. It's bright. Uh, not, not much going on. Um, everything's very dim. Dim one's right there. Not much going on. Ah, then there's a bright one right here. <clears throat> What's interesting about this one is the shape of it. Are these like plasmic in nature and they can distort and change? Are these the same things that end up consolidating together to make it look like an apparition or uh, a spaceship or a, a plane or whatever? But there it is and it's... This now is oval in nature. It's very energetic. So, there's something going on here. There's a blue one right there. This is blue now. These are all, like I said, within, you know, 10 seconds apart of each other. And um, sometimes a little sooner, sometimes a little later, but in there, there's the bright one back, uh, right there and right there. These are not planes. It is a cloudy day, cloudy night. Um, dim. Uh, 
Ha! Ah, two again. Two again. <clears throat> That's not one right there. Oh, it could be one, but it's affected by the light in the back. It's much brighter in here in the back. My very old place that I love is an ugly place, but it's the daddy place, so. My son's mother, she's got the house, the cottage, and Gussie and my son, you know, I have him most of the time. Ah, another bright one right there. These ones in the back seem to be much more brighter. Another distant one here. These are not planes, but it's a cloudy day. It's hard to see things in the distance when it's cloudy. Overcast day. Uh, and the leaves starting to change. Isn't that interesting? It's interesting with the leaves too, with the flash at night. Or are these leaves? Yeah, they're just leaves. It's interesting. Uh, and then there's an orb right there. It's not very interesting looking. That's it's sensational. <clears throat> there's a lot of movement. Ah, there's another really bright one that flashed. Right there. I know it's not like people want. I know. I know people want more than what I'm giving them, but. I think this is an important aspect of the research. That one's very bright. <coughs> I notice when I take the flash, it almost like it seems like there's multiple things reflecting, but they don't show up. This one right there, right there. <coughs> Not much there. Uh, and then all of a sudden we'll turn around and then very bright. These ones are bright. Some shooting around. I don't believe that's the raindrops because it was raining. So. so then what are these things? What's interesting about these things is they're in movement and they have uh, some very um, metallic or well, energetic. All right, in nature. This one too, once again, two of them, almost the same size again. <clears throat> this is coming from the light. Um, yeah. Next. Ah, the interesting thing about this is they're moving down this way from the this corner going down. Then there's one shooting this way. Next one. Any movement at all? Let's see what's going on. Seem to now be shooting the two shooting on a different direction. Nothing. Has some darker fate ones. Shut back to this is all I'm, I'm standing all in basically the same location. I'm moving basically about 20 feet max from my back door to my car and back. And I know it's kind of boring, but it's part of the, the process of this research staying in the same location and filming and see what's going on. I think if we all did this and similarly did something like this, or if enough of us did it. I think we can start gathering a little more detail, uh, data uh, about what this behavior of these things called orbs. Not much going on. There's a big one right there. You can see this over this guy's house. And why don't I ever get ones that are like really big on my uh, cameras and other things? Like they keep their distance or something. I do believe something's paying attention to us. Something's paying attention to our thoughts or planting the thoughts, and somebody's influence our days. I'm, I'm starting to believe there's very limited free will of anything called free will, 
and they're, we seem to be in this matrix and predestined to go through the shit they're supposed to go through. Like me, since birth, I have to dealt with Rh negative disease, and then ended up with MS and all the other struggles I've had to go through in life, and I'm not alone in this. And this shithole uh, dumpster fire of a you know disappointment called life is, you know, it's. N there's nothing much to learn except to learn some reincarnation soul trap matrix. <clears throat> Let's see. Is there something here? And he, like here. Yeah, pretty much not much of anything. Just a bright one in the distance. And then there's one right there. They're not really showing off for me. I I know I. I guess I have to start doing something, some kind of rituals like everyone else has to do to really manifest. What I want to do, um, I don't want to manipulate this too much. Maybe I am regardless just by simply paying attention to this stuff. Oh, there's another bright one. <clears throat> Nothing special though. Very, um, why is it that, uh, is this is the overcast night have some kind of influence? There's a bright one in the corner. And they they're not lining up perfectly. They just seem to be two again right there almost. <clears throat> but nothing special. And there we go again. We then we had the grouping of them a few seconds later at this angle. <clears throat> but they're not showing up. There's nothing brilliant. The next second, and they're faint, like they moved away. We could call it all dust, but every, you know, <clears throat> this is a problem with this dust theory is this should be more consistent. If there's the amount of dust particles in the, in the air, it should be a little more consistent than me filming them in a way. Kind of like rain, when you rain, film it in rain, you can tell, you start to distinguish between what is possibly an orb and that which is a raindrop but if there are there they're distant they're high above I am deliberately if using the lowest you know I'm not really zooming into this stuff I'm just you know my standard setting and taking pictures because what I'm hoping is to catch things that are much more closer <clears throat> Um, there we go again. There's one right there. This one's again almost like two, something going on. Two show up that are bright. And there's one, two again. This is all in my backyard. I know it's, it's, it's this is boring. I mean, it's meant to be research, not entertainment. So, let's see. Anything else going on here? Not much. Not much. You can see them in the distance. They're not showing up. They're not flashing. Eh, there's one of these more bluish ones. Like I said, bluish or uh, a couple of bright ones right there. And there's a bright one right there. A few seconds later, a couple right there, or three, I guess. And one right there, some right there. There is one right there. Then there's not much. So we have one that's kind of bright and all that paired up or grouped up with this three. And then there's that. And then there's it's a bright one right there. And there were, I just, there was no planes. So. Although it would be interesting if someone is really close to an airport would do the same thing is he's then we could just help us to distinguish what uh, uh, what a plane looks like compared to uh, orbs and other uh, um, anomalies in the sky. So we go over there then we look back to the back and we see them very light but it seems either they're very small or in fact when you look at the compared to the, in front of the trees, and if we go like this, 
it suggests that these very small ones with small particles, if the particles are now there. But the thing is, they weren't there. Now they're not. They were there. Now they're not. <laughs> here they are. I mean, not, here they are. And now they're not. There we go again. And we have a grouping of it. Now, uh, there's association with orbs, night uh, phenomena, and trees. <clears throat> and trees are very key to our research, whether it's Sasquatch, um, the paranormal. What is it about trees? Uh, the the uh, orb whisperer from Australia, Paul, he said that they come out of the trees. And maybe you know, he's probably right. Maybe, but I don't know for sure. And not much. Still not much. Not much. How much? There's the larger one. It's the smaller ones at the distance or the different size. I do believe there's some kind of plasma in nature. I guess probably, but how to prove that? It's limited resources. Not much. Right one in the distance. Uh, there it is. It's a bright one. Not much there. I think I'm just about done here. As you can tell, I was about 10 minute uh, duration of filming and was done. So there wasn't too much that's all that exciting last night. Not really. <clears throat> that I can tell. It doesn't mean there wasn't something that was significant or important. One of the things is, is the night before I filmed an apparition. So what, why did that happen? Um, do, if you, do I have to do some kind of rites and rituals to make these things come about? Do I even want to do that? <clears throat> Not particularly. You know what I mean? Because I think a lot of this, like, I think the vast majority of things that are called UFOs are these things. And somehow they consolidate, they uh, make a decision to give us a light show to certain people at certain times, uh, or people practicing particular, once again, rituals. They claim that. A lot of people who uh, practice uh, different types of divination and necromancy and uh, summoning of spirits and all that they claim that this is what they can do. They can make it look like you're seeing a UFO when you're really not. <clears throat> well, it's an unidentified, that's an unidentified flying object, right? So, you, know, you repeat, you know, uh, doesn't mean um, anything really. <clears throat> This is a placeholder. Why were they not? No, and no colors. No colors at all. Nothing exciting at all last night. Except for right about here. There is some strange movement. And we can do see the difference in movement. And uh, it just, you know, once and they're moving this way then there's just one moving that way and then they're moving down this way nothing a very bright one very energetic but not close another energetic one in front of the tree but it's, it's like none wants to be close to to me, why don't they? Why can't I get one, <coughs> film one, that is uh, that at least appears closer to me? All right. 
the light bright one in the distance and then it's, it seems to be a bright one there still there is a bright one there now <clears throat> there's a bright one right there and they're bright there we go the two again that one is probably the most significant of ones in my book because of the shape of it now I don't see any of the rest of them being that distorted and there's another one there so pairing up again people talk about eye shine all the time in their Bigfoot research how is this what the real eye shine is <clears throat> nothing and then these two very bright not much of anything, although you can see except in the distance they are bright. But they're very bright. Bright one. Two bright ones. <clears throat> Movement, it appears. Is that the closest they're going to get? Why can't we get ones that, that are um, brighter? And really close. Why can't I get ones that are like really, really close? There probably is some, but the problem is, I, unless someone's filming me, I don't know how close they could possibly be to me. You know what I mean? I need someone to film me while I'm filming this. So if you could work to, together or with, with the person to do this, actually filming each other while you're filming the sky. And I'm not talking about the distance guy. I'm not talking about trying to film the stars or the moon. I'm talking about what's around us. The atmosphere, the air around us. Especially if it's associated with and without trees. And what's going on here? What is going on here? <clears throat> so this is for the report of October the 17th. Uh, 2023 in my backyard in northwest Ohio on the border of Michigan. 